شلونك او كيفك تمام البنت الجميله عندها شو هو بيقول لها مبروك وبتقول له علي يبارك فيك ليش I first learned Arabic when I was in high school. I had a, I had a choice between Arabic and uh, French, which was a no-brainer to me. I said, people around me speak Arabic. I need to be able to communicate with them. I probably didn't know at that time that I would make a career out of it. You know, I was kind of this geek who would always correct people's grammar. And I even had teachers in... in in school that I would just go up to the board and correct their spelling. Why? I mean, why? When? I mean, when? When? I mean, when? There was, actually, before I started working here, there was, uh, I attended a workshop, a workshop for Arabic teachers. And the night before the, the the workshop started, I remember meeting a bunch of the uh, the other participants in the in the lobby, most of them Arabs. And, you know, we introduced each other, I'm this, I'm that, and, you know, I said my name, and since it's not Ahmad or Mustafa or Karim, it, it rang like something foreign. So they asked me, so where are you from? And I said, I'm from Tel Aviv. And I remember this guy said, Arabi? And you teach Arabic? And I said, Taban, yeah, sure. I don't know, any time people from the Middle East meet together, there, there's some kind of political issues that come up. Once I made clear that I, I based my political stances not on the fact that I am from Israel, but, but on, the, on the actual facts, that kind of gave the green light to treat me as, as, um, as a legitimate participant in this particular event. I'm not saying that that necessarily is, is a good thing, because I would like everybody to be treated equally, regardless of what they think. But at least my national background, or ethnic background, was eventually not the obstacle. What would have been an obstacle was, you know, if I, if I had a particular view. And, and that's a little more legitimate, I think, you know, because if, if I speak to you and I, I say, I don't like you because you wear glasses, <laughs> that's just silly and, and immature. But if I spoke to you for a while and I realized that we really have no common grounds, then that, would be, that might be grounds for saying, you know, well, maybe we should agree to disagree and not talk about these things anymore. <laughs> I also, I, I don't believe in, um, in a sterile classroom that has no political activity. But I think that's, I think dialogue is part of, of being, at, again, at an institute of education, institute of higher education. Let me put it this way, I'd rather someone stupid or ignorant take my words and twist them to make me look like an evil asshole than not having this discussion with my students at all. <laughs> you know, I had a professor at Penn, a Jewish professor, and I was once speaking with her, and she, I remember she said something like, are you crazy looking for a job teaching Arabic? They'll never hire you. And they've hired me. <laughs>